said, but to revive esotericism for the West and esoteric psychology or uh, a psychological and mystical work together that reunites us with our being and gives us that gnosis or that direct experience of our being and of divinity. And, and so of course we're using, I mean, in this current form of gnosis, Western astrology. And it, again, it's not that any culture couldn't dive in, just like we can dive into Vedic astrology or even Mayan astrology or other traditions. And certainly we draw from non-Western traditions, of course. And when we do, we realize what a different mindset those cultures and those traditions actually are coming from. And, and so thankfully, we also have a lot of rich esotericism and spirituality from the West and, and Master Samael being, you know, Latin American in the 1900s came to speak to the Western mindset in modern times. And, and so we're going to leverage an astrology system that helps us to do that. And that's, that's what he did. And so this geocentric astrology that puts as if this, the earth and you and me, as if we and the earth are the center of everything, because in terms of our work, not in an egotistical way, but we need to centralize ourselves, you know, at, in the center of our work. And so it's not that we, we think that the solar system rotates around the earth, like those medieval alchemist astrologers were depicting in art, but it's that we know that we have to start with ourselves, the philosophical earth, ourselves as the starting point and, and work from there. And, uh, and so it's, a, you know, it's in a beautiful astrological system to help us to do this work. And there was this um, other 1900s devout traditional astrologer, or Western astrologer, Olivia Barclay, that said that astrology is the study of the action of spirit through the medium of heavenly bodies on material matter of the earth and therefore on us. Because again, we are that element earth. Each of us is that element earth. So the study of the action of spirit through the medium or the mediary of heavenly bodies on us. That's a beautiful way of defining astrology and what it really is. And so for, I mean, you've all been here before in these monthly astrologies, so you know we're not going to get that much into astrology. This is kind of it, you know, talking <laughs> in the very beginning, you know, a few minutes really talking squarely about astrology. And then we get into, okay, why? You know, what's, what's the purpose of this? And what are the influences that this particular sign are involved with and teaching us about? And so we're moving into the month of Libra coming up in a few days. And as we've talked about each time recently too, that we are physically and energetically a zodiacal system in our bodies. And each of these signs <clears throat> actually has a relationship to particular organs in our bodies. And Libra relates with the kidneys. And so you've probably seen the symbol of Libra as the scales. <clears throat> and the kidneys are the scales of the body. And Libra influences them and has a relationship with them in terms of balance, this sign of balancing the scales. And we can imagine the spine like the central column of the scales and the kidneys are the scales themselves. And the kidneys relate with passions and impulses. And so the more sort of, um, E egotistically passionate and impulsive we are, the worst shape our kidneys are going to be in. And, and that can be felt and known by a doctor. It can also be felt and known by ourselves intuitively or clairvoyantly. And it can be seen, you know, the sort of uh, lustful or aggressive or self-serving types of passions show up as like a kind of a dark, dirty red clairvoyantly in the kidneys. And so it's shown through the, the aura or the color of our kidneys. And the kidneys relate with this psychologically. And 
in Christian scripture, it says that God searches the heart and the kidneys to examine us, to assess us. And we could say, um, you know, gosh, that word, that G word, God, like, what is that? And it's, it's in, in a Gnostic perspective, God is gods and goddesses and angels and lords of karma. And, you know, that, that God is this plethora or this pleroma, really, that God is multiple. God is gods. <clears throat> And that's reflected in that word that gets translated into English anyway as gods of Elohim, which is a plural word of gods and goddesses. So that word that's repeated again and again through the Bible in Hebrew is expressing the word says gods and goddesses. And then in English, it gets simply translated into God. So we, we lose, we lose a lot in translation, unfortunately, because of the lack of the English language's ability to capture spiritual truths because the English language is so degenerated, frankly. I mean, it's not a very, it's not a great language in terms of really capturing spiritual truths, which is why we're always grabbing from other languages to explain these things. And, and in Psalm 26 of the Bible, it says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. In other words, test me, assess me, try my kidneys and my heart. So in other words, like, look clairvoyantly into my heart and my kidneys, and you will know what I am. You will know how I think and how I feel. You will know me. And the kidneys clean the blood and they extract impurities and, and they also manage the water in the body. So they're related to fire, blood, and the waters of the body, water and fire, right? Passions and creative energy within us, those elements of, of fire and water. The psychological aspect of water, of course, as we've talked about, is adaptability and the psychological aspect of fire is can we manage our emotions? Mm -hmm. And so again, when we can't, our, our kidneys and our hearts suffer a lot. And the kidneys are on top of the adrenal gland, each adrenal gland, which regulate as well and balance us. <clears throat> Let's see, oh, I'm going to the next slide. Okay. Um, and Venus particularly influences the kidneys and is the primary ruling planet of Libra, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. But, um, but yeah, Venus is known to also have a strong relationship with these glands that also are these organs that relate with this sign as well. And Paracelsus, a great uh, medieval doctor, talked about the power of Venus through the kidneys. And so he was, um, he incorporated astrology quite a lot in his capacity and his way of, of healing people and helping people. And he talked about how um, Venus through the kidneys helps to influence conception. So the conception of each of us, but also our development, also our human development. <clears throat> and so the kidneys play a, a huge role uh, in our in our inception, our conception, and in our development too. And so then all the psychological work related, the passions and the adaptability also play out into our conception, how we are created and how we develop, of course. <clears throat> so then this is sort of a more ancient uh, image representing Libra, who often is represented, this sign is often represented as the scales being held by a woman. And in the West, often we see her as Lady Justice with the blindfold over the eyes holding the scales. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit too. But a woman holding the scales. And we can, for those who are familiar with the Egyptian tarot that we, that we primarily utilize and work with, in terms of our, our tarot work in this gnosis, the card eight, you know, is shows an, a female initiate with the scales, balancing the scales, uh, 
the sword and the scales together. So that that's also the same symbol of Libra. And in another Psalm of the Bible, it says to one's own spirit, one is saying to one's own being, one's own spirit, one's own inner God, the darkness and the light are both alike to thee, to my spirit, to you. For you have created my kidneys. You have covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearful or other words in awe and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and words and that my soul knows right well. And so that, that alludes to this balance, that darkness and light are alike, that impartial, blindfolded, not, not because of blind, but because of impartiality, holding things with equilibrium, holding things more dispassionately, <clears throat> without so much preference, without so much me and mindness in it. And that's how we gain control over our passions, is that we, we work with non-attachment. We work with letting go of our attachment to our sensations and our desires, that very fundamental and very Buddhist work, very Gnostic work, so that darkness and light become more alike and we are more equilibrated. And like we said in the email last night, here we are approaching the equinox too, that equal night, equinox, equal day and equal night moment this coming week as we turn into this month of the scales and this greater opportunity under the influence of Libra to gain more balance and to look at how am I balanced? And there's this turning of the season out of that more um, externalized, exteriorized energy of summer and more into that introspective season of autumn in the Northern hemisphere. And so we're, we're <laughs> and in this year, especially with, with quarantining or semi quarantining and the West coast kind of getting smoked in, it's not smoked out, but smoked in and really being asked, I mean, sort of like an early autumn hit the West coast last week, like go inside, be introspected. And we're all sort of, sitting here faced with what, what do you have? You know, what, what do you have in your kidneys and your heart? How have you been living? <clears throat> Are you balanced? You know, what do you have to work with when you're, when you're kind of left so simplified? <clears throat> and, and so it's a great month that we're going into uh, because we're really being asked to do that. I mean, sort of like 2020 is a year of the scales for humanity, for sure. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a massive and mass karma that is occurring for the whole planet. And we're all in that personally as well. Globally, yes, and personally being, being resting here with our scales going, hmm, am I in balance? Am I, you know, mentally and emotionally and physically balanced enough? Am I resourced enough on the inside to go through this in a healthy way? And I know in, in the work that I do, I'm sort of finding that people who uh, reached 2020 not really in a good place of being resourced or balanced physically and or emotionally and or mentally are struggling a lot, <laughs> having a hard time and having to, having to like figure that out now under a bit of duress, you know, and, and, um, and so we're all being asked to really look at, we're being confronted with our levels of balance right now. <clears throat> so we're going into a month where we can take advantage of the forces of Libra that really help us with that. Now, as we've talked about, like with any astrological or planetary force coming our way, that energy, that strength, that force is coming our way. And if we're doing an inner work, then we can take advantage of it, especially if we know what's coming our way and we know the work to be done and we can take advantage of it. That's one thing that gnosis or knowledge helps to give us is that insight into what's happening and how can I take advantage of this for my internal development? <clears throat> if I'm oblivious to that, and if I'm really not 
working in a way that's that's creating internal balance and that force is coming want it or not like it or not and it can actually be destabilizing so for people right now that feel very very out of balance and they don't really have an internal work it can feel very stressful or or destabilizing right and so it's as we as we keep saying of course it's important that we that we wake up to the internal work that we're being asked to do every human being is and the forces that are here to help us but that can feel unhelpful if we're not doing the inner work that every human being is designed to do we're, we're made for this so any anything that's not doing what it's made for is going to be living an awkward existence and human beings that are not doing an internal work which is what we're designed to do are living in a, an awkward existence that's out of balance right the scales are out of balance <clears throat> As he says in the zodiacal course, uh, Master Samael, all the forces of the universe continually seek equilibrium. So all the forces of the universe, of the cosmos, which means order, are constantly seeking equilibrium and balance. Hence the law of karma as a, as a necessary, as a necessity in order to manage this constant seeking of equilibrium of, and of balance. And we can see that in nature too. Nature seeks to balance itself and it can seem like, like it's going out of balance, but usually those things that are happening that are extreme and seem really out of balance are a strong counterbalance to something else happening that's extreme. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we must learn to look at the alternatives of pleasure and pain of profit and loss with indifference or not, or with um, detachment with non attachment, right? That's the psychological lesson for us to create that balance inside of ourselves so that we're, we're in flow with the movement of the cosmos, which again means order, which is always seeking balance. So it's, it's, if I balance myself, I don't need to be balanced by force, by those extreme reactions on the outside. It's sort of, what's a good example of, it's sort of like, um, just even ecologically, like why we might have, um, we, we respond to things, for instance, if, if, if we were um, farming and, and gardening in balance, in an actually balanced way, if we actually knew what we were doing, as people when growing our food, we would know how to have balance in the soil and balance crops such that we wouldn't, we wouldn't be then overrun by certain insects or certain diseases in the soil. We wouldn't be over farming, for instance. And so then we, so then that depletion of the soil or that, that um, the lack of, of, balanced health in a system that we create through our ignorance and our desire to have more of certain things. And um, then that creates an imbalance that we then try to counterbalance with pesticides and um, other, you know, GMOs and things like that. And so it's this constant pendular swing uh, that's just showing a lack of balance. I mean, does this look like balance? You know, it's, it's okay. It's trying to balance, but it's not balance. It's not a state of balance. And that's unfortunately in, in our ignorance to how things actually operate. That's how, what we're doing physically in terms of how we try to run things in this world you know, the party way on the right and then the party way on the left, you know, and who's going to get elected this time. And it's as if it's going to make that big of a difference when we're swinging on a pendulum, you're just going to keep slingshotting back and forth. And, and rather we need to create balance on the inside. And then God as karma searches your kidneys and says, good to go. I don't need to create conditions on the outside of this human being to, to make them be in balance because nature is always seeking to balance and we are included in that. So if we are out of balance, then we will be balanced. 
<laughs> and it's sort of like uh, we've always, you know, our kids growing up, we've said to them like, hey, you know, if you take care of your own business, we won't need to intervene. And so if we, as children of God, kind of take care of our business, then the law of karma doesn't need to really do that much with us. Now we've got, you know, lifetimes of karma, so that's a bigger topic, but but creating balance on the inside is incredibly simplifying. It's actually totally liberating. And we've said this before in different groups with you, and you get it, that at first, like a rebellious teenager, we think just, you know, I just don't want any rules, you know, just let me be free, right? But freedom doesn't come from chaos. Freedom comes from being organized from the inside. Freedom comes from that natural sense of order and harmony, and then we can be free, really. But in our, in our egotistical sense, we want to force freedom without any balance on the inside, and nothing, nothing in creation operates like that. Why would we think that our life could operate like that, um, and it doesn't? So the natives of Libra are advised to comprehend this psychological teaching you know very deeply that we need to look at the alternatives of pleasure and pain profit and loss with detachment with non-attachment because natives of libra you know tend to want things a certain way there's that tendency to want to balance and and so it's so important to be doing an internal work so that the focus isn't always on fixing everything on the outside and balancing everyone and everything else rather to bring that balance on the inside is the is the only solution any of us can really be in charge of and and so and likewise in from the Bhagavad Gita which the in in Master Samuel's teachings on Libra he quotes from the Bhagavad Gita multiple times and this Hindu teaching really from the 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 between the being and the soul who's working <clears throat> Arjuna the soul and Krishna, the being, it says that when the mind is led by the wandering of the senses, then it carries away the soul like the wind and a ship on the water. So Master Samuel asked the, the natives of Libra and therefore all of us during this coming month, because we'll all kind of be in Libra this coming month to really <clears throat> comprehend that phrase when the mind is led by the wandering of the senses, then it carries away the soul. <clears throat> so we're going to be paying attention in our practice to that uh, wandering mind and to bring it back and to bring it back and to bring it back. So we've already been talking about karma and certainly this sign of Libra, this influence of Libra, the psychological and esoteric work with Libra <clears throat> has to do with balancing, which is always a matter of karma. And the Egyptian Book of the Dead teaches that after death, one's heart, in other words, one, one's conscious, conscience, which you can see in the little pot on one side, is weighed against the, the feather of ma'at, on the scales of Ma'at in the hall of Ma'at. And Ma'at is an Egyptian goddess of truth. So she's like the lady justice of the Egyptian tradition. And her name implies, Ma'at implies or means truth and balance and order. So she's the Egyptian goddess that has the feather, the plume coming out of her headdress, right? And she's that lady justice of impartial justice. And just like when as children, we are fairly, if our parents are fair, let's say, we are fairly disciplined by our parents, but we want to protest and we feel like it's unfair. But when we kind of grow up and we grow out and we look at that from the outside, we realize, oh, they were really trying to help me. They were trying to cultivate a mature person out of me. And they needed to deliver that justice to me. And it's just like that with karma. And so when we're not very mature, <clears throat> we're kind of on the inside, the child inside of that bubble in relation to karma, we complain and we protest and we feel like nothing's fair, 
when it's not to my liking. And that's a very relative way to exist. Everything relative to me. <laughs> it's not impartial, you know, it's not very objective. It's really not very psychologically mature. And, and so as we gain more of a realistic and harmonious relationship with what karma really is and how it is, it is a necessary force of divinity that flows through every atom of creation. Otherwise, nothing could exist. Like nothing could be without karma. But then when it comes around to me and my karma, I protest, I um, complain, I am confused. You know, I, I forget that, oh, <laughs> that necessary law that flows through every atom that's here to make sure everything ultimately stays balanced enough for creation to be also applies to me in an intimate way, in a personal way. And the only solution uh, to what I might feel as problems with karma is to create more equilibrium and balance within, to be more balanced within. <clears throat> and so this <clears throat> teaching, we could say this metaphor of the balancing of the kidneys, of the water and the fire, <clears throat> of the passions and dispassions within me is really important. <clears throat> <clears throat> and so here we have a, <clears throat> a more Western depiction of this Maat, of this Lady Justice. In this, in this case, she doesn't have the, the blindfold on. It seems like her eyes are closed, though, to, to indicate that impartiality. It's not personal, you know. It's not personal. <clears throat> it's a balancing force. And... Each of us, you know, as we really psychologically and esoterically mature, we need to receive the things that happen in our lives, whether we like or dislike, receive them with some faith, with some trust in the order and the organization of things. <clears throat> and to then seek, well, what am I, what am I here to learn? Like, what am I to learn from this situation? Let's say a situation I don't like, like an illness. Okay, we can certainly say it's, it's a karma, but that isn't always to say like, oh, it's bad luck, or it's, or I'm bad, you know, because I'm getting an illness, because I get sick, or something happens that people around me say, oh, how unfortunate. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a karma, but we want to decouple the word karma from bad. <laughs> it's because it's neither good nor bad. Karma is beyond good and evil and good and bad. And, and we've got to let go of so much relativity, everything relative to me, and see things from a bigger perspective in order to get out of that relationship with karma. Like karma, because usually people, they say that, oh, that's, that's my karma, as if to say, that's bad, you know, and I'm bad, or it's all bad. And to, to change our relationship to karma, into our idea, to change our concept of karma, it's just a balancing force. And so to receive our karma as that, as a teaching, because it is a teaching. And <clears throat> certainly if I'm receiving, um, karmic consequences that I don't like, well then for sure the thing to do is gain more balance inside, to not fight and protest, but like to really go for balance, to really go for the inner work. <clears throat> As Master Samael says, we need to become conscious of our own karma. And this is possible by means of the state of alert novelty. Being conscious, being aware because when we're not really conscious and aware, and when we're not relating with ourselves as an essence, with a long story arc before and beyond just this life, then we get really myopic and we get really finite in our way of thinking, like we've been talking about in the revolutionary psychology meetings, and we get really into relativity, everything relative to me and what I want and what I don't want. 
And then I can't become conscious of my karma because I don't have the state of that alert novelty or awakeness to what's actually happening because novelty means new and the moment is always new. So to be in the moment, in other words, <clears throat> he also says the law of karma of cosmic balance is not a blind law. One can ask for credit, but every credit must be paid with good deeds. And so we also learn in Gnosis that we can actually really work with the law of karma by doing the internal work that we're expressing here, by creating balance within ourselves, more equilibrium, not being enslaved by those senses that carry away the soul, learning how to stay in the central column more, which transmutation is a huge help to that. Our relationship with our own internal waters of life, our creative energy that we teach in these teachings is, is fundamental to creating this internal balance and therefore creating within ourselves uh, some authentic ability to actually work with and negotiate with the law of karma. <clears throat> so if we want health, you know, then, then transmutation is, is not only energetically important for our health, which it is, but karmically it's important for our health too. And all the practices that we do actually are good deeds to remember myself to in a moment when something could trigger a negative reaction out of me and to take a pause and take a deep breath and to refrain from adding onto the weight of the, of the scale of negative emotions, that is to work with karma. So doing our internal work is good deeds, profound good deeds. So while there's karma yoga, there's different kinds of yoga. Karma yoga is the yoga that teaches like working with karma through doing good. And that's really valuable and important. Yes, volunteer, you know, donate, do good things, do good deeds for sure. But that's not enough. We, we also need to be balancing our psychology. We need to be balancing our thoughts, balancing our lower emotional center, balancing our energies. But it can't, it's not all about external activities. Those good deeds are internal too. And as Master Samael has said, and as well, he's taking this from other teachings, really, that the lion of the law is fought with a scale. So the, the lion, maybe you've seen the lion in your dreams sometimes, you've certainly seen it in art, is a representative, not always and only, but is a representative of the law of karma. So oftentimes lion, if we pay attention to our relationship with a, a large cat of any kind in our dreams, it, it could be showing us something about our relationship with karma. Are we terrified? Are we running? Are they attacking us? Or do we have kind of a calm, more tranquil relationship with that big cat? Mm -hmm. That can be telling us something about a karmic situation we're going through or our relationship with karma. But that lion of the law, as it said, we, it says fight, but we work with, we negotiate, we, we, have um, capital, we could say, in the, in the face of that lion of the law, with, with our balancing of our scales, our conscience, our heart, what, what's in our heart, what's in our kidneys, how are we treating the waters of creation within ourselves, within our kidneys, what are we doing with our lower emotions, are we balancing? <clears throat> and so we do this inner work, and then we have something uh, positive to say or something something on the side of the scales when we're in the face of karma and that lion of the law to say, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> but I'm doing an internal work. I have something here. And, and in due time, you know, we can work with a little bit more directly. There's a practice of one of the runes, the physical and energetic posture prayers that we do, the rune not, N-O-T, is when we take the physical posture of the scales and we sing the mantras 
na, ne, ni, no, nu, which those vowels relate with the, the chakras, of course, in the central column. And we move the arms up and down like scales. And we pray for this balancing of our karma. We can pray for something very specific. If we're, if we're going through a situation that's really inhibiting our internal work, especially, then certainly we want to, to work to negotiate that. Better to bring to, to the law of karma something that you have done or are doing than something that you will do. So like better to pay for things up front or to have a job already that you, you trust you will be able to pay with. In life, that's a good rule. <laughs> but also internally, that's a good rule. Like better to already be working you know, rather than to say, oh, I will do this in the future, right? Negotiate with things you're already doing and especially your internal work. And that's how we work with the law of karma. So we can have those kinds of prayers, have those kinds of postures to do this work. So it's not a merciless law. It's, it's a balanced law with rigor or justice and mercy which is shown on the tree of life, those two columns of the tree of life of mercy and justice. And one thing that these teachings teach us is we can, we can always transcend what's called an inferior law, a lower law with a superior law. And so an inferior law would be like, like that teaching of the, of the Old Testament of the Bible that's very fundamental and important, that first law, <clears throat> that teaches karma is, karma exists and you, and you better obey it. <laughs> it was more the teaching, it was kind of harsh in the Old Testament. You know, a lot of people getting punished, the teaching of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you know, this even exchange, but we need to learn that first, like hit and you will get hit, you know, basic two-year-old learning. <laughs> and, then, and then the superior law has gotten into with the New Testament, that is the law of mercy, that is the law of forgiveness, right? That, that second law of love, which is a superior law, which if we're too fixed to that first law, it's like, no, you know, I got hit, I'm going to hit. We can't just stay there. We're not two-year-olds forever, right? And so, so we want to actually move into that second law of forgiveness. So we understand karma is and things ultimately are balanced and I don't, I don't really have to worry about it that much. I don't need to go around punishing everybody. Like that's not really my job unless I'm a Lord of Karma. And, and, and so, and even then it's like still not the person personally doing that. And so we want to transcend those inferior laws of vengeance that are justifiable and make sense to the mind, but with a superior law of doing the internal work that leads to a real authentic compassion for how they could have done that and a forgiveness and then i'm free and then i myself am also we are both freed from that vengeance and that hatred and that anger so we transcend inferior emotions with superior emotions we transcend inferior laws with superior laws <clears throat> So that's how we work with karma. And that's our psychological work into this month. So gosh, if you have a, a karmic situation going on or a resentment, great. You know, it's a great thing to enter the month of Libra with <laughs> actively. And so this is how um, artistically anyway, Libra is, is represented in terms of the, the constellation in the sky as these scales and <clears throat> on the 23rd of this month, we'll, we'll enter into the time of Libra, at least according to this traditional Western astrological system, and it'll run for a month. <clears throat> and as we've said, it rules the kidneys. The planet related is Venus, also Saturn, but primarily Venus is what's talked about. The metal related, which is the metal related to Venus of copper, the stone, chrysolite. The element is air. And so as we've talked about, each of the signs is related to a particular element. And so while we've talked about the water and the fire, Libra actually is, is an air sign. And so there's also that element of, of air and 
detachment, the psychological teaching of detachment, non-attachment, not grasping to things, but being able to let things go is that psychological work with the element air. And the incense galbanum, which we have some actually at the Vancouver Gnostic Center, it's very gummy. When I got it, it's like hard to even work with because it's just so sticky and gummy, um, but it's a nice, it's a nice incense. So we're going to take a break now and um, take about oh, 46. Let's take a six minute break. So whatever your clock says. Set your clocks. Set your clocks. Yeah, we'll take a five. Five never seems to be quite enough. So we'll take a six minute break, stretch, do what you need to do, and then we'll come back for the practice and then we'll have time for questions and comments at the end. Okay, so we, we always advise, like when we begin the runes, there's this rune that's called Dagaz, which is the prayer posture with the, the feet together, always the body relaxed, just because we're doing a posture, we don't want to stiffen up and you know, we, we always want the body to be relaxed because energy flows through a relaxed body. And we, ad we advise anyway, the right over the left, the hand of action commanding over the left, the sun over the moon, the line of the being over the line of life. I could go on, but I won't. Okay, so, <laughs> so then closing our eyes and going within and breathing and relaxing and knowing what it is that you want to pray about in terms of gaining more balance and what do you want to carry into these coming days, this month of Libra, seeking to balance physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, esoterically, karmically. What is it that you need? And then outstretch the arms out like a cross or the scales. In the book, it's not specific, but I, I keep the palms up as the scales. And continuing to remain relaxed and breathing, not holding our breath. And with our prayer, our prayer to our own innermost being in our own internal lady justice, that aspect of the law and our conscience and the balancing inside of us, that aspect of divinity that's intimate to us, pray to that aspect to bring balance and to help you to create balance inside through your inner work, through the way you see things, do things, feel things. And as you pray in this way, bend to the right seven times.
come back to center. If you need or want to, you can let your arms rest for a moment. And continuing the prayer, this intimate prayer for your own internal work, for your own needs, your own relationship with balance and karma. Then bend at the waist with the arms outstretched as scales to the left seven times. And coming back to center when you're done with those seven times, then again, cross your arms over your chest and have faith in this work. Have faith that your own intimate divinity, your own being is helping you, is listening, is present with you, and that these prayers are known and heard. You don't have to worry about that. You just need to remember it yourself. God does not forget. And let's take our seats to go into a period of meditation. seats or floor, wherever you're meditating, <clears throat> sitting, lying down, whatever's comfortable for you where you can have that alert novelty. And breathe down and up this central column of the scale, down and up your spine. Finding balance in your breath and in your way of breathing, a balanced way of breathing, nice deep inhales, a pause, and a complete exhale, and a pause, this four-part rhythmic breathing, bringing presence, bringing concentration, bringing equilibrium to our systems. And as you breathe and relax in this way, continue to imagine yourself as a scale. The lower body is the stable base, the spine, that central column, the top of the scale, the head, the brain, the cross beams form a cross at your heart. And the scales hang as your kidneys representing your karma, your balance, your vital energy. And be a relaxed scale, not rigid like metal, but a human scale. And continue to pray for the will, the help, the force that you need to create more balance within yourself. Not thinking, but listening. We concentrate with the breath 
and then we listen. To pray is to listen. When the mind is led by the wandering of the senses, then it carries away the soul, like the wind, a ship on the water. Come back to your breathing, come back to that central column. Concentrate and listen. Thank you. 
And now from this place of being centered in our hearts, <clears throat> the center point of the scales of that crossing beam, <clears throat> crossing that central column, being stable as a scale. Let's extend our praying out from ourselves to others, to someone else. And let's begin within this group. And it might be, in some of your cases, the person right next to you that you know well. And it might be sometimes that you don't know. Maybe someone in the group that you do know and you do know where they need help. And let us pray for one another. That you also may find greater balance and freedom and peace within that balance. That you may be freed from some of the weight of your karma. That you may be given some mercy, hope in your heart, faith in your mind. And we could pray for <clears throat> everyone we remember in this group, each one of us praying for the others, that we may find that hope, that peace, that faith that comes from the inner work active. in the way we may be met with some mercy. And let us extend this prayer outward beyond this group to our loved ones and our friends, to other groups in which we're involved. And as this human scale praying outward for balance within each of them, to find that peace of equilibrium, that peace that comes from recognition, consciousness, forgiveness, Maybe we pray a little extra for those we know who are suffering right now. They may be given a balm, encouragement, that they may be consoled. and see the scales, the internal scales within them, balancing. See them also as internal scales, the spine, a mind, a heart, and balance of the scales. And extend this prayer outward to those with whom you struggle, whether you know them or not. Someone who you judge. 
and see them too as a human scale and pray not for your will to be done, but the will of their being. Pray that they find balance sincerely. Try to let go of your partiality in your judgment of them. Free them from your resentment and free yourself. Let them be in peace and let yourself be in peace and extend your prayer outward to the whole world, all the people of this world, all each a scale, seeking balance and sought to be balanced. This whole planet of scales within this realm of cosmic justice, cosmos, order, balance. And pray that we all understand conscience, consciousness, that we all come closer to what is truth, what is compassion, and what is balance. That we all gain hope, faith, and freedom. Pray for the impossible. Why not? And now come back to yourself as a scale with a nice deep inhalation. Again, breathing down and up that central column of your own scale. Back to your body, coming back to where you're seated, coming back to the space in which you are. And hopefully feeling encouraged and empowered by this practice. Write in your heart what you're carrying from this practice. What will you move into this month of Libra, praying for, meditating upon, and doing in new ways, feeling in new ways, thinking in new ways, to be a more balanced scale, a human scale, balancing himself, balancing herself. And let us silently seal that within our hearts and we can silently or out loud sing Om three times. Oh. 